Hey there, what's going on, guys? We are back for another episode of We Talk LA. Uh, joining me once again is WeLikeLA.com, Editor-in-Chief, Juliet bennett Ryla. Juliet, how are you doing? Uh, good, yeah. All things considered, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, we're in the dog days of the pandemic here, right? More than a month in and staying at home all that time. Every, every day, the days are kind of starting to blend blend together a little bit, I would say. Yes, I would agree. Um, fortunately, uh, we do have another list of stay at home slash virtual to do's that we're going to discuss today. Uh, I know that I wouldn't say it's been a struggle to keep compiling these things, but um, there has been a bit of a realization that not all quote unquote virtual things to do that you've been researching in the last few days are created equal. Some a little maybe uh, clunkier than others. Yeah, that is true. Um, we've covered a lot of them that are still up and they're still great. Um, I have noticed that some of them is, yeah, they're, they're just a little clunky. I played a lot of games last night. Uh, one in particular, I couldn't, I couldn't solve the puzzle until I entered the password and the password spelled incorrectly on their end. So I had to like oh. basically reverse engineer where they made that typo to continue. Um, and I, I don't want to recommend things like that because I feel like no one wants to be frustrated right now. Um, but there's good stuff out there. Um, it's just a lot of it, a lot of the highly interactive stuff, it's selling out really fast. Um, right. Are very much looking for these types of experiences and they're booking their slot. A lot of it's free and a lot of it's very low cost. But even so, if it's live, if people have to book experiences, they're booking up very quickly. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there, there's a huge demand for this kind of content. It's really the only game in town. So if you have a high quality interactive like puzzle or an online escape room or something like that that has um, limited uh, bandwidth or limited capacity, then chances are you're going to do pretty well. Um, right. in terms of uh, getting people to sign up and getting people to fork over a few bucks. Um, that said, yeah, there are some local things we wanted to talk about uh, happening for the next few days in Los Angeles. Um, the tops on our list, uh, or one of the top ones for our list for, for uh, the coming week, was Art Beyond the Glass, which uh, is a real life event that's been happening for a number of years now in Los Angeles. It's kind of like a I guess you'd call it a fundraiser benefit event at its core. A uh, bunch of folks in the cocktail and bar community essentially put this on every year. And, and what they do is they get bartenders with other skills, like you know maybe they're a spoken word artist or a poet or a, a painter or a photographer or a musician, and they get them kind of to band together their talents, um, present them at a one night event and they also have a bunch of cocktails and they get a bunch of uh, proceeds to go to local charities so mm -hmm. um, for example in years past they've done uh, fundraising for the women's center for creative work or for um uh i, I think it's beautify earth was last year I'm, i can't remember if i'm saying that right or not but it was a uh, environmental based based one this year of course uh in consideration of the pandemic and kind of what's happening to the um, food and beverage community overall they're doing uh, they're doing it with pro proceeds to go to uh, bar and cocktail staff. Is, do I have that right? Yeah. So this year, since you can't go to the event and order a cocktail, they're doing these to-go packages. Um, so it's four cocktails from four different bartenders. You order online, and then you can pick up. Uh, I think April thirtieth through May two, you can pick up at a at a couple local bars, and then you can enjoy those cocktails at home. The proceeds will benefit those bartenders who are out of work. And then there's a telethon on the third where you can kind of tune in and sit with them if you want, um, kind of be a part of that action if you want to. Otherwise, I, I think it's fine if you just want to enjoy the cocktails on your own. But it's a, it's a good way for these bartenders to be able to still be having money come in and to not completely lose this event. Right. And I think a lot of them were probably hoping, I mean, who, who have really strong skill sets or maybe an artistry that they wanted to, to show off. I think it'd be nice to be able to have people still see that um, right. even though the live event can't 
can't go off. Now you did buy one of these kits, right? From a, from a mutual friend of ours. You, you have a set that you're going to be picking up in the next couple of days. Is that right? Yeah. I, um, I picked up the Bacardi and chill set, which is not a Bacardi heavy set actually at all. But, um, yeah, uh, one of the last things I did before lockdown was I went to Big Bar. One of the bartenders there, Eugene, had invited me to come in and check out their new burger and martini night. And then, of course, like uh, a week and a half, two weeks later, everything shut down. So I happened to see him on there and I was like, oh, hey, um, this is one of the last people I saw. I probably won't get to see again for who knows how long. Uh, I'm just going to buy their package and support them. And uh, it doesn't hurt that all the drinks in, in the package sounded really great. And we're obviously not going out and spending money now on these sort of things. So it felt like a good treat. Um, and, and one thing I've been enjoying is uh, donating to people who have some creative stuff going on. So if people have a live stream or if they're doing an online performance and they're accepting tips, um, to me that feels like a really good way to donate because I know exactly what it's going to and exactly who it will benefit. So been enjoying doing that a little bit. Quick question. What was, now is it a set of cocktails that you got or is it just one, 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 one cocktail? Because I know we were talking about the names, what he named his cocktails that you bought earlier and there's a little like a uh, Westworld twist in yeah, one so of them, right? Four and his is the Dolores Aberfeldy. Okay. If I'm saying that correctly, uh, which is supposed to be a play on Dolores Abernathy, the main character one of the main characters in Westworld yeah the big bar folks and Eugene specifically they're big they're big on the HBO dramas I've noticed <laughs> they were like wait so into West uh not Westworld they're so into Game of Thrones when that was going on they'd have like these theme nights it was it was really a lot of fun actually they were they would get super into it yeah, so I'm not it's great you went to one of those yeah I was gonna say it's not surprising that they're they're on the, the Westworld bandwagon right now too but that's cool uh, hope, uh, I'm sure that that's going to be great when you when you guys pick that up. Um, okay, so that's happening. The fun, the telethon is on the third, and you can be picking up the drinks for the next couple of days. So that's one thing. Uh, another topic we wanted to talk about was there's a lot of film festivals that were slated to happen in April, um, either just did happen or will be happen or would have happened in the coming week. And unfortunately, obviously those are those are not happening in real in uh, the physical world, but a lot of the films are going to be showcased online and I think that's an opportunity for people maybe to get to see something they, they wouldn't have seen. So maybe you can kind of fill us in on that, what's happening in that front. Yeah, there's at least three happening this week uh, or this up in the next several days. Uh, the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, that's going to kick off online on May 1st. With two episodes of the upcoming PBS series, Asian Americans. And then the Los Angeles Latino International Film Festival, Connect 2020, that opens on May 5, the screening of The Last Rafter. And there's a bunch of other stuff on both of their sites. And uh oh, we got a cat. We got a cat situation interjecting our uh, our um, our film festival preview segment here. Yeah, so um, a lot of the content's free. It's on their website. You can see everything that they have to offer. This is her favorite chair. So when someone else sits in this chair, watch out. Um, and then the other thing is South by Southwest also has their uh, several selections on Amazon Prime Video and that's free for the next couple of days. Um, and I think it's really cool because I feel like when you get invited to a film festival and you finally get your work in there, you're really excited. And then what happens when the festival gets canceled? So yeah. it's not the same, but at least because it's online, people can still experience that work. Right. It's like, like we're, I just said with the, um, the folks doing the art behind the glass, uh, um, contributing their talents to that. They, they want to, they're doing it for a reason. They want to have their work seen and mm -hmm. um, they want to show it off. And of course, if, if you're an event uh, organizer, somebody putting on this festival, you need to keep some sort of momentum going for the years to come. You don't want to take a year off just because of, uh, of what's happened and then come back two years later and try to solicit your audience or, or folks to come back like, hey, remember us, we, uh, we did that thing a couple of years ago couple years ago I know it seems like forever ago but that's great that they're bringing that online for the for the South by is it for Amazon Prime members then only or is it just like you could go on amazon.com and, and search this stuff and then play it, it seemed like anyone could when I looked at it but okay I mean I was my computer automatically logs in okay it. something to check in on but yeah possibly possibly for everybody but def definitely if you're an Amazon uh, 
Prime member who has access to their video video stuff, you'd be able to see it. Um, so we got that the uh, RP on the glass. We got a bunch of movie a festival or film festivals that are possibly available online. And then we were going to talk a little bit about like Zoom phone call experiences, some interesting things that part, some we've covered before, but some we just wanted to some some are somewhat new and just things we wanted to kind of like round up here. Maybe you can kind of take us through a couple of those that were were piquing your interest. Yeah, I'm actually I'm really curious about this magical help center. It um, for Harry Potter is uh, is what I'm referring to it as. That's that's my name. Yeah, it's an interactive stream where it's an inter. <laughs> I don't hear or see anything, but I could see your face turning back. <laughs> Some sort of mischief is up behind behind where Juliet is. These cats, these cats are a disaster. Um, <laughs> you can see them. Um, so this is an interactive uh, show where you are an IT person helping magical creatures with their wands and their crystal balls. Obviously, you don't know anything about that. Um, so I imagine the live stream is pretty interactive where you're going to have to figure out how to help these people as they call in. Um, and for me, that just seems really fun and whimsical and a, a great way to escape what's currently going on here. Right. Um, and there's, there's a couple others that are less interactive, but they still feel a little different than being on your screen. There is a line from Mr. and Mischief where you can just call in and it'll ask you if you want inspiration or commiseration or a couple other things and you just tap the button you want and you'll hear a message. They change the messages often. So it could be something you do when you wake up or go to bed. You can just hear someone read a poem or tell you a story. Uh, the Department of Social Distancing website is similar, except that instead of polished pieces, it's just anyone can call in and talk about how they're feeling. So you can just listen to people ramble about how they feel about their college courses being canceled or what they're doing right now, um, which can kind of be a surprisingly human connection when you're not really listening to people in real life anymore. Um, and there's also a lot of text-based experiences. Um, games where it's kind of like someone has your number and you need to help them by Googling stuff for them. Uh, there's a lot of really creative stuff happening um, and there's a pretty low low barrier. Uh, some of it, a lot of it's free, some of it's more expensive if you're dealing with a live actor, but there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, you kind of get what you pay for in some some respects, though. Some stuff that's like maybe free or too hastily put together might not be as fulfilling as some of the things like you said, where you're dealing with a, a real person one on one, like the, the live actor yeah. uh, uh, version of, of what you're just talking about. Yeah, there is a live actor one uh, that seems really interesting to me. It's a, a kidnapped girl has your number for whatever reason and she calls you and you have to help her escape and you're with her the entire time. I did another one that was very similar to that only at a much lower price point. Uh, and it was very obvious that I was talking to a bot because I would say something back to it and then it wasn't the right keyword. So the bot would say something that didn't make any sense, but uh, it was- Unle like unless, unless it was a real person and he just leveled you mm -hmm. with like some like, you know, crazy reverse psychology thing. No, right. no, uh, that wasn't it. Um, all right, well, I think that's a pretty good roundup of stuff for, for the week to come. I think one thing we wanted to mention was that um, if you're not seeing something on this week's list that's like, you know, super tickling your fancy, there's a lot of stuff that you've covered like in the past three to four weeks on like, because you've been listing like 40, 40 things basically. On it. We've, we've collectively as a site put like 40 to 50 things together every week. And most right. of them have been relatively new. And a lot of those are still going on. So if you were to go back into some of those lists and kind of look for things that are ongoing, uh, virtual experiences, escape rooms, puzzles, trivia nights, whatever, the whole, the whole gamut of stuff there, there's a lot of options out there. And like you said, a lot of them are still, are still free. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that just, uh, we've included it several times saying we wanted to make room for new stuff, uh, but it's still going on. So there's the comedy quarantine show, there's a bunch of trivia nights, King Trivia, they go live every Wednesday and Sunday, I think. You can just hop on and play. Um, 
they do not give prizes away in the same way because they can't tell if you're not Googling all the answers, but that's going on. There's a ton of live drag shows. There's a lot of stuff that we've already covered. We're not putting in a new list, but uh, it's still going on. Yeah. The way I like to think of it is that if for some reason you feel like this current week's list is short in any regard, it's only because Juliet is too good at her job and she's already covered so much stuff that probably nobody else has even like thought of to look at before. And like realistically, we've already probably mentioned it at least twice. So just go back to those previous lists and you're going to find some, some good stuff. Yeah. And uh, go, go ahead. Have new stuff every single week. Um, a lot of the museums have new programming that comes up literally every single week. Um, there's a theater company that has a huge archive of plays you can listen to and it's just, they've just constantly got stuff going. Yeah, I think it's important too for the, like the stuff the museums are doing. Again, for the same reason, like the, we talked about with the film festivals, it's, it's important they just keep that connection going mm -hmm. with the folks who are their patrons or their museum members, the people who are gonna be funding them for years to come and to kind of maintain that, that relationship with them, not just kind of like go radio silence because they can't open their doors anymore. And of course they have a lot of interesting stuff in their archives usually that they can share. So taking it on online platform is usually a, can be pretty interesting for them. Yeah. And it does in one way allow them to reach a, a far greater number of people. There are a lot of people who may not have gone to one of those shows who can now access it virtually. Uh, there's a company called Matterport that makes um, these little like virtual galleries. Well, they make a lot of virtual things, but you'll be in a gallery and you can click around where you want to go and you can look at different pieces on the wall. And it's kind of a cool way to experience art. It's not the same as standing in front of a piece, but if you were never going to go to the city and never going to see this museum in real life, it's kind of a cool way to see stuff you never would have experienced otherwise. What does it, what does it feel like? Like a Google like street view almost as you're clicking through yeah. these, these kind of things. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Cool. All right. Something to think about as well. Well, uh, Good roundup, Juliet. Uh, I'm looking forward to another fun week of at-home to-dos and not leaving my house at all. So this should help this should help me and others get through that. Um, thanks for taking the time to chat with us again today. We'll do this again next week and uh, see what's happening for that week ahead. But until then, I hope you are well and uh, I will talk to you again soon. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Take care.